Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're going to be doing front brakes on a 2014, it's a Ram uh, 1500 four wheel drive. Uh, this brake job is no different than any other one, it's fairly simple to do. The only thing you're going to do with this one here is you're going to make sure that you change the hardware kit. If you don't change the hardware kit, you're absolutely going to have a problem with the, the brakes dragging and you're going to wind up prematurely wearing out your rotors, which is exactly what happened on this one here. The right side was rusted and when it rusted, it stayed applied and when it stayed applied, it actually caused a squeaking noise for one and it caused the vehicle to pull off to the side for two. So the right side is done. It was very rusty in there, so we had a persuader with a uh, with a hammer. So I'm going to bring you in here. I'm going to show you the left side, what to do, what tools you're going to need, and then we're uh, we're going to get this job uh, wrapped up and out the door. So come on, I'm going to show you what uh, what tools you need. All right, this is a pretty much. Yep, keep that door. Okay, this is what you're going to need basically to get the job done. Obviously you're going to need new brake pads. We are going to change the rotor which I have down here on the floor. Uh, we need a hammer. We need a set of metric sockets. We are going to change the hardware that I talked about. Uh, we need a pair of cutting pliers to remove these clips right here because we are going to cut these off and we're going to throw, we're going to throw them away. Uh, we are going to use a half inch ratchet because the bolts on here on the other side were extremely tight so we're going to uh, we're going to use a, a breaker bar and uh, and a yeah, half inch drive ratchet. Um, normally I would shoot this off with an air gun but I'm going to do it by hand to show you how it's done um, you know in your driveway or wherever. You're going to need a couple of ratchets to uh, to uh, break the, the bolts loose on the uh, on the caliper itself. Uh, you're also going to need either the longer the uh, the handle, the better off you're going to be because the the shorter handle uh, you wind up with uh, not a lot not a lot leverage. So, all right, you're going to also need a wrench. I use a thin a thinner uh, wrench. This I think is a this is a standard socket. I mean a standard wrench. I think 11 sixteenths and and five eighths if I'm not mistaken. Yep, doesn't fit it perfectly, but it actually holds it tight enough that I can actually take the nut loose in the back. You're going to need a tool like this to push the pistons back in on the caliper and a pry bar to push the pistons back in. Of course, some brake grease and a very long pry bar to get that rotor off. So, uh, all right, let me get you set up and uh, let's get started. Okay, I hope you can see pretty decent. These are those clips that I was telling you about. These clips right here, they actually pull the, uh, the uh, rotor away from the, I mean, pull the... Uh, brake pads away from the rotor so it doesn't have a constant drag but when these rust into the uh, mounting bracket it fails to pull it back out they stay applied the rotor overheats and you wind up with a pulsating pedal or premature brake wear that's why I say don't play around just change these here uh, if you get a good set of brake um, pads they usually come with the, uh, the new ones all right so we take a pry, a little pry bar or screwdriver like this, we go in the back over here and we just push the piston back into the bore. This one is a little tight. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it the other side. I couldn't do it on the other side. I wound up having to push it back in um, once I had the pad and the caliper off. So I'm not even going to play with it. We're going to do that over here on the other side. All right, now we're going to loosen up these, these bolts here. Now, as you turn this, I don't know if you can see this. Let's bring you in there. I'm going to show you real quick. You see as I'm turning this, this ratchet right here? You see that's turning? That's no good. If that's turning, if that's turning, that bolt is not loosening up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come on here with a... Uh, remember that, um, that wrench I told you about? It's probably about a 17 or an 18 millimeter but it, it's a little tight squeezing it in here because that little collar right there, that's why I'm using the thin wall, I mean the thinner um, wrenches that I actually have. All right, so you're gonna hold this wrench here and we're gonna turn that to get it out of there. So uh, let's continue with it. I hope you can see better. I mean, I hope you can see, okay. All right, so you hold this wrench and you pull this wrench down. And then once you have it loose, it's not a big deal. 
Now, do not take this one out until you loosen up the one on the bottom over here. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to try to turn it. Let's see if I can get you a better view here. You're going to try to turn this, and that's going to rotate, and this caliper is going to pull out. So leave the, uh, leave the top bolt connected loosely, and then we'll take this out here. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stand in front of you for a second here. Sorry to block your view, but it's tough to do it reaching around. All right, so now once you have it loosened up, you don't need this wrench any longer. We could put this off to the side. We're going to take out this bolt here. Don't lose them because you're going to need them again to put this back together. We're going to hold on to these. Now you never want to let a caliper hang by itself. Take a piece of wire, whatever you have, rope, a bungee cord, and just take the caliper like this and pull it off to the side, out of the way, so that nut doesn't bother what you're working with over here. Now, this one is not as bad as the other side. This one still moves a little bit. These pads slid out okay. The other side I had to beat it with a hammer to get them out. So uh, this side is not as bad as the other side. But we'll put that off to the side for now. We're going to take this pad here out. Not too bad at all. The other side was real, real rusty. All right, now, next thing you want to do is you see these pieces here? These are actually called slide pins. You want to make sure these slide pins slide back and forth. Both of these slide nice and freely, so we don't have to worry about anything with that. We are going to lubricate these uh, later, but for now, we're just going to leave them right like that for now. All right, next thing we're going to do. Now, if you have an air gun, you can shoot off these bolts in the back over here. Uh, if not, you can get in here with a, with a breaker bar or a half-inch ratchet and you'll be able to break it loose uh, by hand. I'm not used to doing this without my air gun. I get kind of spoiled. But if you don't have an air gun, you have to use a, uh, a breaker bar. This is how you do it. It's actually work. A lot easier when you have an air gun, let me tell you. Okay. And I will take these bolts out here. We're not going to lose these because we need to reuse these also. You probably heard me say that about a million times. And we'll put this off to the side for now. Now, if this is rusted inside here, you'll need to clean this up with a piece of sandpaper, emery cloth, file, whatever you have. You need to get that rust off of there before you put it back together. So we'll put this off to the side and we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, getting the rotor off. You're going to notice that there's little clips on this rotor here. These clips, don't even break your coconuts trying to get them off and save them. Just grab it with a pair of, of cutter pliers and break them off. You don't need to put these back on. My theory is they put these on so that the, the uh, that when they're building the car, the rotors don't fall off or or get whatever pulled out. All right, so you just grab it with your cutting pliers and just snap it off and then get rid of them. All right. Now the rotor sometimes comes off fairly easy. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we are going to be changing this rotor, so it doesn't really matter too much. So I'm going to just hit it here a couple times, and this will pop it right off. So uh, cover your ears. Alright, now, I just want to point something else out to you also. You see the face right here? You see this rust on there? You need to get this rust off. It is very important that you get that rust off. If you leave rust on here and you put the new rotor on, you're going to have a pulsating pellet. So I'm going to use this tool here. We're going to clean it up in here. And uh, then once I get it cleaned up, we're going to get that new rotor mounted on there and we'll come right back. So uh, let me clean this up and uh, we'll come back. 
Okay. And once you have it all cleaned up, then we can put our rotor back on. Just slides over the top just like this. I do want to point this out to you. This rotor comes coated with oily, you know, like a grease. I did clean it off so that we didn't have any kind of um, um, smoke or any kind of uh, whatever. So we just clean it off with some brake cleaner and a rag and you're good to go. All right, now, uh, when you put this rotor on, you see how the rotor falls back off like that? What I normally do, I'll show you. What I normally do is just push the, put the lug nut back on like this and screw it down. This lug nut has got the cap on the end, so what I do is just stick a nut. Okay, this nut's not going to work, so we'll come right back with that. They normally do just just put a nut over the top of it, a very large nut. You turn the bolt or the uh, the nut that holds the wheel on like this, and it holds your rotor in place so it's not banging around while you're trying to get it together. So uh, all right, let me uh, grab the caliper um, mounting bracket, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. Now, remember what I said: if this is uh, rusty in here, you need to clean this off. This one is a little bit rusty, so I am going to take a little bit of an emery cloth to it, clean it up a little bit, and I'll come right back. Okay, so now we have, uh, we did clean that bracket up a little bit. I did have to take a, an emery cloth to it and clean it up. So, uh, you know, we did have to do that. Now, wherever the pieces, the slide pieces are going to go, the, uh, the clips and the brake pad, you want to make sure you lubricate it really well, just like this. every place that the brake pad is going to touch. Now what I always do, which is just me, I put a little bit on this side here too because that's where that clip is going to touch into. Not that you have to, but that's just me and my uh, obsessive compulsive nature. All right, now, we are going to do these pins right, you know what, let me show you right now before I put it back on. These pins, you just hold it right, you hold the rubber and you pull this out like this and we're going to lubricate each one of these tough to do one-handed but I usually do this on the bench all right okay so this is what we're going to do you take your pin out like this you lubricate it and you put it right back in the same hole you took it out from right just like that put it right back in there just like that all right, and you want to make sure that the rubber popped back up on the top where it's supposed to, which it did. And now we're going to reconnect the uh, mounting bracket using the, uh, the bolts that we previously took out. You catch them both by hand. Don't, uh, don't tighten one all the way up before the other is caught. Okay, now we're going to tighten them in. just going to tighten these in temporary. I'm going to look this up on the computer to see what my torque specs are on these bolts and we'll come back to that but I'm just going to snug them in there now. Okay. Okay so now our mounting bracket is mounted back on nice and tight. So now next thing we're going to do is we're going to install our brake pads. Now, before you put the pads on, you remember what I told you about this caliper? We're going to take this caliper now. We're not going to let it hang. We're just going to put it up here like this. Let's see if you can watch what I'm doing there. All right. We're just going to sit this here for a minute. We're going to lay one brake pad in here. And we're going to put the other brake pad in here. And then we're going to use this tool. this tool or any other tool to push the pistons back in. This one just goes in between the brake pads, you turn it and it pushes the pads back in. But, uh, I'll show you how that works. Let me get it set and then I'll turn it so you can see it. I hope you can see that. And as you turn it, you see how these pistons are pushing back in? You have to make sure that they're pushed back into the bore 
all the way, otherwise you'll never get the brakes over the top of that new rotor. Now there's multiple tools that they make. This one here just happens to be the one that I've always used. So I've had it probably forever, so we're just going to let the brake pads push in nice and slowly. And once they're pushed in all the way, then obviously you take it back off. Okay, now we're going to take our, our caliper and we're going to leave it hanging over here one more time now. That's good for now. And now we're going to come back to... Okay, now remember we talked about these little clips right here. You have to make sure you put these new clips on. And the way that they go on is you want to have that little piece right there touching up against here so it pushes the brake pad back out. So we're going to put these on just like this. Okay, just like that. Do the same thing on the other one. Okay, and then you take the brake pad, you put it into here like this. Make sure your little pieces outside like that. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side here. It's a little bit tight sometimes getting in there, or a little bit snug. But it goes in just like that, see? And see what happens when you apply the brake, it pushes in, but you see how it pulls right back out again? That's what you want it to do. You want it to move nice and freely inside that, uh, that bracket. All right, then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side now. I mean, in the back part, put it on. Make sure the clip is on the outside. Now, it's a little hard to see around the back, but... Okay. See? And you see how they push in and they pull back out? That's what you want, to, want it to do. Okay. Now we're just going to leave it sit there for one minute now. And now we're going to talk about the uh, caliper itself. Remember, you don't want it hanging. You probably heard me say that too many times. You probably don't even want to hear it no more. Okay. Then you, everywhere that the brake pad touches. You want to lubricate just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just a little bit of, uh, of uh, the brake silicone all around just like that, including over here where it's going to touch here, just like that. And now we're ready to mount this back on, right? So what I always do is put it in the back like this, pull it in, and then you can push your, your other brake pad in with your finger. You're going to need to push these little clips out of the way for the slide pins so that it slides down where it belongs, just like that. And then we're going to catch those two bolts that we took off. I think they were 12 or 13 millimeter. You're just going to catch them loosely. You're not going to tighten them yet. I just want to point one more thing out to you. Make sure you didn't twist your brake hose up in here. Make sure it's a nice straight line, because I've seen them already where uh, cars come in to do an oil change, and I'll look underneath it and see that brake hose is twisted. So, uh, all right, just be careful and make sure it's a nice straight. Right, now we're going to tighten up these, uh, these bolts on here, these uh, what, 13 millimeters. Now we're just going to hold that bolt I mean the, uh, the slide pin, we're going to hold this so it doesn't rotate, and we're going to snug these up. Same thing over here, we're going to tighten it down by hand, we're going to hold it with the wrench like this, and now we'll tighten up that bolt in the back like this, and that's it, you're all done. So let me take my gloves off and we're going to 
talk about what we did. Okay, we uh, cleaned up the face where the rotor is going to fit on here, on the hub itself. We temporarily held the rotor on like this with the uh, bolt and just an old nut that we had laying around from an axle. We put our um, caliper mounting bracket back on. We made sure our bolts in the back were tight and we did torque them to the proper specs. We uh, put the new hardware on the brake pads themselves. We put the pads in and lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We lubricated our slide pins, and that's it. We're all done. All right, so um, let me just do this. Okay, so that's it. You're pretty much, let's get that light out of here. We don't need that anymore. Um, all right, so you're all set. Follow these steps, and you shouldn't have any problem whatsoever. Just take your time. It's a little frustrating with those clips sometimes, trying to get them back in there. But, uh, you know, if you can't do it while it's on the car itself or truck, do it on the, on the bench, on the ground, wherever, so you can put the brake pad in and get it in all the way. Don't forget, lubricate everything. That's very important to keep it from rusting up. And that's it. You're all done. Now, before you drive the vehicle, get in the car, pump the brake pedal a couple of times. And you, the first time you step on it, the pedal is going to go to the floor. But if you pump it a couple of times, you'll actually set these pistons back out into the back of the, uh, the brake pad, and uh, the brake pedal will come right back up. Once you pump the pedal up, take it out for a test drive, and I'm sure you're going to be absolutely perfect. All right, just uh, follow my advice. If you have any questions or you want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.